Greetings and welcome to Physical Science at Hack. The purpose of this video is to go through a couple of sample problems from Chapter 4 on heat and temperature in our Physical Science textbook and work through some problems hopefully similar to what you'll be looking at for the homework assignments. So the same general types of calculations and the types of problems you may need to be able to do. So let's look at start looking at the first one. First one says that the average human body temperature, as we know, is 98.6 degrees Fahrenheit. And what is the equivalent temperature on the Celsius scale? So as we'd like to, let's start off with what we know here. And we know that the temperature in Fahrenheit is equal to 98.6 degrees Fahrenheit. And we want to know the temperature in Celsius. What is that? We want to be able to find that. So let's find our equation here. We know that our equation to convert them from the textbook is the Celsius temperature is equal to 5 ninths times the quantity of the temperature in Fahrenheit minus 32 degrees. So now we just have to put our number in there. This is equal to 5 ninths times 98.6 degrees Fahrenheit minus 32 degrees Fahrenheit, which is equal to 5 ninths times 66.6 .6 degrees Fahrenheit, which equals 37 degrees Celsius once we've done the conversion. So our body temperature is about 37 degrees Celsius as compared to 98.6 degrees Fahrenheit. So that's our first problem. Let's look at the second problem, which says that a 15.53 kilogram loose bag of soil falls 5.5 meters at a construction site. If all of the energy is retained by the soil in the bag, how much will its temperature increase? And we give you the number for the specific heat of soil. C soil is equal to 0.2 kilocalories per kilogram degree Celsius. So let's write down what we know. First of all, we know the mass of the bag. So M is equal to 15.53 kilograms. We also know the distance through which it falls which is equal to 5.50 meters. We know the specific heat of the soil. So C sub soil is equal to 0 0.200 kilocals per kilogram degree Celsius. So that's what we know in our problem. Now we're going to have to work this in a couple of, of steps. First of all, we want to find the energy. That would be our first step. Let's find the amount of energy that this bag has when it strikes the ground. Well, the kinetic energy with which it strikes the ground is equal to the potential energy that it had previously when it was up in the air, which is equal to mg times the height. In this case, the height is the distance through which it fell. So that's equal to 15.5 three kilograms times the G, we know G is 9.8 meters per second squared, times the distance through which it fell, which is 5.50 meters. Now, if we multiply those all out, we find out that the total amount of energy is then equal to 837 kilograms meters per second squared times meters. And we know from previous that that is equal to joules, so that's 837 joules of energy. But that's not the end of our problem. We want to find the temperature increase. So next step is going to be to convert those joules into, into kilocalories. So let's convert it a little bit here and see what we end up with. So we want to convert to kcals. Which is 
we have 837 joules. And we know that one kilocalorie, so multiply that times one kilocalorie, is 4,184 joules. And that gives us how many kilocalories? 0.2200 kilocalories. So now we know the energy, yeah, the heat, and we want to find out how much the temperature increases. So finally, we want to find the temperature change. Find essentially delta T. Now we know, so now we want to find delta T. We know our equation for heat, Q equals MC delta T. But we want to find the temperature, so that means that delta T is equal to Q divided by MC. Q we know, that's what we just determined up here, so that's equal to 0 0.200 kcals divided by M, the mass, which is 15.53 kilograms times the specific heat of the soil, which is 0 0.200 kcal per kilogram degree Celsius. So that's equal to, if we divide all these numbers, we will find out that it is 0 0.0644 and what are the units? Well, the units are going to be we had kcals in the numerator, we have in the denominator kilograms times kcals, and also now in the numerator these two come up, because we were dividing by them, so these two actually come up to the numerator, and then we get in the numerator uh, kilograms degrees Celsius. So what cancels here? Let's look at our units to make sure we're getting everything right. We cancel kilograms, we cancel the kilocalories, and we do get an actual temperature, which is 0.644 degrees Celsius. So it equals 0 0.644 degrees Celsius, which is, we could also write that as 6.44 times 10 to the negative 2 degrees Celsius. So 6.44 times 10 to the negative 2 degrees Celsius, that would be our answer for this problem. So a couple of different steps that we had to go through there to be able to get the final answer. We'll see that in a few of these problems. Some of them just were one step, some of them require multiple steps. So let's look at our third problem here, which says that a 100 kilogram, or sorry, 100 gram sample of metal is warmed 20 degrees Celsius when 60 calories is added. Now we want to find the specific heat of the metal. So what do we know? We know the mass is equal to 100 grams. We know that the change in temperature is equal to 20 degrees Celsius, and we know that the energy, Q, is equal to 60.0 calories. So those are what we know. What does our equation say? Well, our energy equation, heat equation that we use, says Q equals mc delta T. Now we want to solve for, in this case, we want to solve for C. So let's do that and say that C equals Q divided by M delta T. We know everything already in here, so that's equal to 60 calories divided by 100 grams, and also in the denominator, the temperature, 20.0 degrees Celsius. So if we divide all of those, we find that equals 0 0.300, what are our units? They're calories per 
gram degree Celsius. How does that compare with our numbers from the previous one? We had, we gave the specific heat in kilocalories per kilogram degree Celsius. The numerical value is going to be exactly the same if you change, if you convert calories to kilocalories and grams to kilograms. The, the units, the numbers will actually cancel and you'll get the same value. So this is also equal to 0 0.300 kilocalories per gram degree Celsius. So either one of those is correct. We have an answer here and we have the same answer here. Units, oops, sorry, that should have been kilograms here. That was not grams, that was kilograms. That makes them correct. So though either one of those is exactly the same value, the one just matches with what we used before. Now as I said, there's multiple steps problems and this is a little bit bigger one coming up that requires several steps. So let's look at this one. What we're doing is we're taking a 100 gram sample of water. It starts out at 20 degrees Celsius and it's going to be heated to steam at 125 degrees Celsius. And we want to know the total amount of heat that is absorbed. So let's know what, let's see what we start with. We do know the mass, which is 100 grams. What else do we know? There's lots of other numbers that we know that are not in here. The temperatures are not directly useful. What we're going to be, have to do is do this problem in three parts. This is going to be a three-part problem. We have to find three different energies. We need Q1, which is going to be the heat to raise the water temperature. That is going to require a change in temperature going from 20 degrees Celsius to 100 degrees Celsius. So delta T for the water is 80 degrees Celsius. Now part two, Q2, is the heat to vaporize the water. How much heat does it take to vaporize the water? So what is the heat to vaporize the water? That is going to require the latent heat of vaporization. So we're going to need the latent heat of vaporization of water from our textbook, LV for water, equals 540.0 calories per gram. So that's a number we get from our textbook and we're going to need that when we look at vaporizing the water. There's no temperature change involved there because we raise the temperature to the vaporization point of 100 degrees and then it changes state. So it's a change of state there. There's no temperature change in that case. Now, finally the third part, Q3, is the heat to raise the steam temperature. So now we've converted it to steam and we have to raise its temperature. So we are going to need another change in temperature. This is the change in temperature of steam, which is 25 degrees Celsius. Now a couple other numbers that I did not yet put up there is that we need the specific heats. What is the specific heat? Well, we need C of the water. Again, from our textbook, we know that is 1.00 calories per gram degree Celsius. And we need the specific heat of, of steam, which is 0 0.480 calories per gram degree Celsius. So we need all of those numbers to work this problem. Let's do the first one. Let's do what Q1 is. So Q1 is equal to M C delta T. We've used that before. We know that the mass is 100 grams. We know that C, this is C for water, so that's 1.00 calories per gram degree Celsius. 
and we know that we're going to raise that water temperature 80 degrees Celsius. So what does that give us? Well, let's look at our units. Our units will cancel. Degrees Celsius here cancel. Grams cancel. And we get simply a number of calories. And in this case, we're going to get 8,000 calories. So 8,000 calories to do that, or that's also equal to 8 kilocalories. So let's find Q2 now. Q2 is the heat to vaporize the water. So Q2 is equal to M, the mass of the water, times LV, the latent heat of vaporization. So L sub V. So this is equal to the mass of the water, 100 grams, times the latent vaporization of water is 540 calories per gram. Again, the grams will cancel. So cancel grams there and there, and we're going to get a number of calories equal to how many? That's going to be 54,000 calories. It takes a lot to vaporize that water. And that's equal to 54 kilocalories. So 54 kilocalories here. Now, last part we need to do is now that we vaporize the water, we need to ray into steam, we need to raise the temperature of that steam. And that's equal to, again, mc delta t, which is the mass has not changed. We still have 100 grams just now of steam, not of water. The specific heat of the steam is different. It's 0 0.480 calories per gram degree Celsius. And we multiply that by the temperature change, which is now 25 degrees. So 25 degrees Celsius. If we multiply all those out, we find that that is equal to 1,200 calories, or 1.2 kcals, kilocalories. So now we need to take those three numbers that we found. We need to take the 8 here, we need to take the 54 here, and we need to take the 1.2 here, and we need to find our total heat so Q total is equal to Q1 plus Q2 plus Q3, which is 8.00 kilocalories plus 54 kilocalories plus 1.2 kilocalories, which equals, if we add those all together, 63.2 kilocalories. So we're just adding it together, and we have to do that to get you have to do this kind of in steps to really be able to get it. You can't do it as one great big problem. There's no way to do that. But that gives us our final answer for this problem of 63.2 kilocalories. Now we have one more example to go through. This is about a heat engine. The heat engine is supplied with 300 calories and rejects 200 calories in the exhaust. How many joules of mechanical work are done? So we write what we know. First of all, we know the heat input, which in our book we call Q sub H, is equal to 300 calories. We know that the heat rejected is 2, QL is 200 calories. And we also know the mechanical equivalence of heat. We used this actually before that says that J is equal to 4,184 joules per, per kilocalorie. That's the mechanical equivalence of heat. And now we can find the work done. So the work done is equal to J, which I just gave you, that's at 4,184, times QH, which is the heat input, minus
minus the heat rejected. Now, the only thing we have to do here is let's con we have to convert these to, because this is in kilocalories, these have to be. So this is also equal to 0 0.300 kilocalories, and this one is equal to 0 0.200 kilocalories. So this is then equal to 4,184 joules per kilocalorie times 0 0.300 kilocalories minus 0 0.200 kilocalories. So as we solve that, 4184 joules per kilocalorie times 0 0.100 kilocalories. Again, our units are going to cancel. We can cancel the kilocalories here and get an answer just in joules, which is going to be 418.4 joules for our final answer. That is the amount of mechanical work that is done in this system based on the amount of heat supplied and the amount of heat rejected. So that concludes our sample problems for Chapter 4 on heat and temperature. And until next time, have a great day, everyone, and I will see you in class.